peoples are originally bad. It's only their values mask them as good. Many people gets a hit or sense of fulfillment watching you suffer. Maybe it is not this common as we are civilized now, but it's not unlikely here. And then you encounter a negative person who wants you to see suffering. Their power comes from your sadness or fear. And here are some ways to encounter them and make them powerless. We will share five tips to project yourself stronger in any situation. We will follow the teachers of Epictetus in this video. So, stick around. Remember, act like a king if you want to be treated like a king. So, without any further delay, let's start our journey and watch the subscription status. If it's white, make it gray. Thank you. Chapter 1. The Company We Keep Epictetus, the Stoic philosopher, offers a powerful insight. We are, in part, shaped by the company we keep. This chapter delves into the importance of surrounding ourselves with positive influences, forging alliances with those who elevate us. Just as we carefully avoid contagious illness, Epictetus urges us to be discerning architects of our social circles. The negativity and apathy of others can be just as infectious. Instead, Stoicism emphasizes the power of positive influence. We are encouraged to seek out winning people, individuals who inspire us to be our best selves, who radiate positive energy, and who challenge us to grow. Imagine your social circle as a garden. Positive influences are like sunlight and fertile soil, nurturing your potential. Conversely, Negativity acts like a weed, draining your vitality and hindering your growth. This stoic principle positions our social interactions, not as mere entertainment, but as pivotal determinants of our mental and emotional well-being. By surrounding ourselves with those who embody the values we aspire to, we create an ecosystem that fosters personal growth and a flourishing spirit. So. The next time you consider expanding your social circle, remember Epictetus' wisdom. Seek out allies who inspire you, uplift you, and challenge you to become the best version of yourself. Together, you can cultivate a garden of positivity that will nourish you on your life's journey. Chapter 2. The Riches Within In a world overflowing with want, Epictetus, the Stoic philosopher, offers a refreshing perspective on happiness. He proposes that true wealth isn't found in bulging coffers or overflowing garages, but in a contented spirit, a heart that rejoices in what it has achieved. We live in a society obsessed with acquisition. The media bombards us with images of perfect lives, built on a foundation of material possessions. Epictetus urges us to break free from this illusion. He implores us to redefine prosperity, not by external measures, but by the internal compass of contentment. Stoicism, as articulated by Epictetus, isn't about apathy or complacency. It's about recognizing the futility of chasing unattainable riches. It's about savoring the journey, celebrating the milestones we've already crossed. The wise person, according to Stoicism, isn't consumed by a yearning for more, but finds joy in the fruits of their labors. This shift in perspective unlocks a profound truth. Contentment is a wellspring of inner riches, untethered from the relentless pursuit of external validation. We discover a deep sense of fulfillment. This isn't about ignoring our aspirations, it's about approaching them with a balanced perspective. Contentment empowers us to strive for goals while cherishing what we've already built. Epictetus' message is simple yet profound. True wealth lies not in what we have, but in how we experience it. A contented spirit finds joy in the present moment, appreciating the journey as much as the destination this is the path to a truly rich and fulfilling life. 
Chapter 3. The Open Mind The pursuit of knowledge can become a curious battleground. Here, Epictetus, the Stoic philosopher, urges us to wield the weapon of humility. This isn't about self-deprecation, but about approaching life with the wide-eyed wonder of a child. Imagine shedding the cloak of assumed knowledge, the arrogance of already knowing. Instead, embrace the mindset that each encounter is a portal to new understanding. True learning, Epictetus reminds us, isn't born from a position of expertise, but from the humbling realization that there's an ocean of knowledge beyond our grasp. The Stoic disciple, then, becomes a lifelong student. Humility becomes the fertile ground where curiosity flourishes. Unburdened by preconceived notions, we become receptive to the vast reservoir of knowledge held by others and embedded in our experiences. Imagine life as a vast landscape. The arrogant scholar plods along a predetermined path, blind to the beauty and wisdom that lies outside their narrow focus. The humble learner, however, explores with the unbridled curiosity of a child, every twist in the path offering a potential lesson. Epictetus's message is clear. Embrace humility. Let it be the lens through which you view the world. In acknowledging how much we don't know, we unlock the potential to learn everything we can. This, ultimately, is the path to true wisdom. Chapter 4. Guilt's Shackle Guilt. It coils around us, a heavy serpent whispering tales of blame. But Epictetus, the Stoic philosopher, urges us to break free from its poisonous grip. He challenges the cultural obsession with assigning blame, both outward and inward. Guilt, according to Stoicism, is a dead weight hindering our growth. Trapped in the blame game, we become paralyzed. Categorizing ourselves or others as deserving of blame distracts from personal responsibility. Mistakes happen, choices backfire, yet dwelling on what-ifs and should-haves offers nothing but stagnation. The key, Epictetus argues, lies in embracing responsibility without succumbing to guilt's burden. We acknowledge our actions, the consequences that flow from them, and the lessons learned, owning our mistakes without feeling crushed by them cultivates resilience. It empowers us to move forward, wiser and stronger. Guilt becomes a fleeting temptation, a thought we recognize and choose not to indulge. Instead, we focus on progress. We learn, we adapt, we become better versions of ourselves. This shift in perspective is no easy feat. Yet, by embracing responsibility as a path to growth rather than succumbing to the weight of guilt, we unlock the potential for a more fulfilling and resilient life. We become architects of our own destiny, empowered by the lessons learned from every misstep. Chapter 5. The Clock Ticks The shadow of death, an undeniable constant, casts a long reflection on the Stoic philosophy. Far from being a morbid preoccupation, contemplating death's inevitability serves as a potent tool for living a more meaningful life. Epictetus, a Stoic titan, urges us to rip away the veil of denial that often obscures our awareness of mortality. This isn't a descent into despair, but rather an ascent to clarity. By acknowledging the finite nature of existence, we gain a sharper lens through which to view our choices. Each pursuit, each ambition, is measured against the backdrop of our limited time. Are we frittering away precious moments on trivial pursuits, chasing fleeting pleasures that will ultimately leave us empty? The stark reality of death compels us to ask tough questions. What truly matters in the grand tapestry of life? Is our legacy built on hollow achievements, or do our actions leave a positive mark on the world? Death acts as a filter, 
stripping away the inconsequential and highlighting the truly valuable. With this newfound awareness, we transform into mindful stewards of our time. Every sunrise becomes a gift, every interaction an opportunity. We navigate life's journey with a newfound intentionality, maximizing the impact of our actions within the allotted time frame. The specter of death, once a source of fear, becomes a powerful motivator. It whispers a relentless reminder. Live deliberately. Pursue virtue. Leave the world a better place than you found it. In embracing our mortality, we unlock the potential to live a life truly worthy of the time bestowed upon us. As we end the video, let me tell you one last thing. Stay like a king if you want to be a king. Stay like a lion if you want to be a lion. It's all about mentality and perspective. We actually have another part on this same topic, personal growth. So I insist you to watch that one or click left one that YouTube thinks best for you. Peace.